A recent Supreme Court decision, Citizens United, outraged many people. I guess it pleased many people. How would you ensure that corporate contributions do not overwhelm and drown out individual citizen voices in elections? I think that's a superb question, and I believe we need to recognize that the effect of virtually all efforts to, li to limit political speech, which I believe are unconstitutional, have crippled middle-class candidates, helped the very rich, and helped big institutions. Fact is, Bloomberg could not have been reelected without a massive advantage in money over his opponent. Fact is, the last governor of New Jersey couldn't have won if he hadn't been able to drown his opponent. So you now have a system of law that says, if you can get big enough interest to back you through PAC systems, whether it's BP giving to certain candidates who don't need to be named tonight, uh, or, or Goldman Sachs giving to certain candidates, uh, et cetera, if you can't amass that scale, then if you're middle class, you can't even run. I think you'd have a much healthier and freer system if you said, any American can give any amount of after-tax income as long as they report it every night on the internet so everybody else can determine who's supporting who, make it a clean, simple system, and then every middle class candidate can go out, and there were enough successful people in this city that any competitor from Air Bloomberg would have been fully funded. Does that include, when you say every, every person can give as much as he or she wants, does that include corporations and labor unions? It certainly includes labor unions. But we already have that right. I mean, notice the labor unions, who are the largest single donor of the Democratic Party, are shocked that corporations are going to be allowed to be in politics. <laughs> this comes down to the to a, the uh, what the Supreme Court in I don't know over the last X years I can't remember when it started maybe Buckley versus Vallejo back back in the day, yep. basically argues that money is speech. Right, for a practical okay. reason. It yeah, is. I, well, but the, the, the alternative argument is, or one of them is, look, the First Amendment does not prevent time, place, and manner restrictions. That's, in other words, you can't... What, Congress what? shall make no law abridging. Excuse. Strikes me as fairly comprehensive. No, it, it, Newt, I'm sorry. You all talk about, you're a historian. I actually never took the bar but I do have a law degree, and time, place, and manner restrictions have never been struck down by the court. What that means, for instance, is you can't hand out election material within like 100 feet of a polling place. You can have a demonstration. Unless you're Acorn. Huh? <laughs> I said unless no. you're Acorn. Nope, nobody, gets, nobody gets to do it. You can't stage a demonstration, or you, in fact it was done to the great outrage of, of legitimate outrage of Nina Easton, you can have demonstrations, but you can't have demonstrations with loudspeakers at midnight in a residential neighborhood. Those are time, place, and manner restrictions. They're content neutral. They've always been okay. And the question is whether or not the restriction of money can be, right. can be you know, equated. But, but, I'm, but I'm not making a legalistic argument. I'm saying as a matter of good public policy in a free society, the people who most fear the ability of everyone to spend whatever they can raise are the incumbents. Because the incumbents, take, the incumbents take tax money, and the incumbents take all, I mean, you know, look at the scale of money Schumer has. You get six years as a senator, you have all the staff paid for, you have all the power of a senatorial office, you have all sorts of people coming to you because you have a $4.2 trillion government, which has all sorts of opportunities. And then at the end of the six years, you say, now, we're going to restrict everybody else to $5,000 donations. And then, surprise, there's no competition because you can't possibly compete. So functional free speech, the effect of free speech, the original purpose by the Founding Fathers, which was to challenge the state. I mean, the Founding Fathers are very, very opposed to a state dominating its citizens. And that's the reason you have the First Amendment. It was put in by Jefferson because of the opposition.